Greetings and welcome to today's hour-long painting lesson. That is something we don't get to say often enough on this channel, or at least we didn't get to say often enough on the channel. Welcome to the brand new hour-long painting lesson series. If you are a regular part of this YouTube family, then congratulations. Today is a very exciting day, one, one we're celebrating, and if you are new to the channel and this is your first video, then congratulations, you've joined us at a very exciting time. I put up an update video about it earlier in the week, but in case you missed that, we are now going to be doing weekly hour-long lessons here every Saturday on the channel. Today we are going to be doing the ship with a beautiful sunset with a starry night sky. It is all in real time, there isn't anything sped up, I didn't cut up or take any pieces out, it is all of it. Now, today's subject is a ship and it is fairly detailed, so if you'd like help with the drawing process, getting that drawing on the canvas as quickly and easily as possible, I do have the digital sketch up over on Patreon to help you with just that. There's the gridded version, there's the non-gridded version. You can also find the reference photo, which I loosely worked from up there as well. Hopefully it can inspire you and maybe give you some extra details and ideas as well. Also, on the note of Patreon, if you are enjoying this lesson, if you feel like you're learning a lot and you'd like to support the channel, you'd like to keep the lights on, the best way of doing that is over on Patreon because it also gets you access to the exclusive hour-long lessons that you can't find anywhere else. You do get the digital sketches, the reference photos. Now at the Alpine level, you get exclusive access to the Facebook group where if you are there, please share your work that we do here today over there. We can all talk about it, we can give each other ideas, improvements, little critiques. So that is new, that is exciting, this is all new, this is exciting. Thank you for joining me here today for all of it. Um, before we get into the actual painting, I would like to talk quickly about the materials, that way you know exactly what we're working with and then we will jump into the painting process. So let's do it, let's have some fun, and let's, as always, stay creative. So here are all of the pigments we'll be using in today's painting. As you can tell, there's a, a fairly wide variety and a lot of new fun colors, though if you are fairly happy and comfortable with the primary colors, like primary red, yellow, and blue, you're more than welcome to use those instead. This is just going to give us a little bit more option and give us some um, additional room to play. So with that said, here I have a cadmium red medium hue, which is a fairly traditional middle of the road red. I have a cadmium red light hue, which leans more towards orange, which is great as it's a bit more of a thicker orange than what we normally mix with primary red and primary yellow. Speaking of thickness, here I have a cadmium yellow deep hue, which is, again, slightly more thick than the primary yellow. It's also a little bit darker, which is great for sunsets. Back here we have Burnt Umber, which we're all fairly familiar with. Then I have a Burnt Sienna as well. This is a new pigment that we'll be incorporating. I love working with it with oils and I'm sure that it'll work great with this one as well. We use it for the ship as it is a bit of a brighter and warmer brown. Then I have a Cerulean Blue right back here. This is great as it leans more towards greens and yellows and it'll be a great color for the sea. Then in the back there I have Titanium White and Mars Black. Again, we're playing with a lot of new colors. For the most part, we are using Liquitex Basics as I do love the brand, but I also really enjoy Winsor & Newton and I found those two pigments in that brand, so I thought we'd give it a try. With all of that said, let's talk about brushes. As you can see, I'm using five varying sized square headed brushes. I like these because they have nice sharp edges which is fantastic for rendering clean lines and they can also pick up and distribute a good amount of paint. Then I have two smaller round headed brushes. These are great for creating softer edges for things like clouds and mist. And then finally I have an older square headed brush which we'll elaborate on in the actual lesson. In regards to technical sizing, I will be measuring a number of them in the lesson to give you a good estimate of what to look for, though I wouldn't worry too much about it and we will discuss it more in the lesson. With that said, let's jump into it. Welcome to the painting and the new layout. Please let me know if you like it, how you feel it works in contrast with the old one in the comments down below. I will be reading and, you know, just continuously trying to improve upon the setup as best as possible. Now today we are going to be painting this large ship right here amidst a nice sunset and a starry night sky. We have all of our tools laid out. We have our water, cloth, palette, 
paint, we have our brushes, and I'd like to note before we begin, because I, I generally get asked the question, how did I draw this on the canvas? I have this woodless colored pencil set, which I like to draw the initial sketch out in, because I can erase these with a regular eraser and they don't leave much of an impression on the canvas. And if I paint over them with a delicate color, like a yellow or a white, this doesn't bleed into the pigment and change its color like other mediums like a charcoal or a graphite can. And then once I have that initial sketch the way I like, I take one of these nice little ultra fine point sharpies and I kind of go over all of the foreground and all of the important details because I like to paint the background first and then work forward in the painting, which means I'm a little bit messy over the foreground and I like to maintain as much of that drawing as possible. And this little Sharpie helps me do that quite well. So that's essentially what I use to draw it. Of course, you can find the digital sketch of this to help you with the drawing process over on Patreon, along with the reference photo, which I loosely use for this. With that said, let's jump in to today's lesson. Here I have a titanium white paint. I have a cadmium yellow deep hue. I have a cadmium red light hue, a cadmium red medium hue, and a Mars black. And these are essentially what we're going to be using for this little strip here in the painting, but it's a good start. And I'm only going to apply these to my palette right now because I don't want to overcomplicate it. Now I'm going to grab what I usually call my larger square headed brush, but as you can see right here, it really isn't that large in comparison to these two. So because we are now incorporating additional brushes, I'm just going to measure this out for you. It is almost an inch and it is pretty much exactly two centimeters. So that is the size of what we are using right here, though I'd implore you not to worry too much about the size of the brushes. Just think about it intuitively in relation to the canvas. So with that said, we're going to take this brush to begin with. I'm going to dip the tip of it in water to make sure it's nice and damp. This is going to extend the wet life of my paint, help me drag it farther and keep it wet longer for blending. Then I'm going to take some of our yellow, move it out to a nice clean spot here on our palette. Just get a, a good amount of that. Then I'm going to take some of my titanium white and add that. This is going to brighten it. It's also going to thicken it. Titanium white is a very thick pigment and it's going to make sure you don't have to do too many layers. So I'm just mixing this up right here on the palette till I get something that's very evenly mixed so I don't have portions of my brush that are yellow, other portions that are white. It's all very consistent. Then I'm going to head to my horizon right at the base of my drawn on clouds, which I only did with red because I didn't want to use the fine tip Sharpie because sometimes it can show through lighter pigments and I wanted to make sure that this applied nicely. And I'm going to start at the top there and then I'm just going to blend my way downwards, as you can see here. And a little bit of that red line from the grid is showing through. That is A-OK, -okay. it just means I'm going to go over it with another thick layer and that's really why the titanium white is such a helpful pigment. If you want a very clear white, a white that isn't as thick and where it's more for the transparent applications, you could use a zinc white. But for our purposes, I generally prefer a titanium white as I like it to be nice and thick. So I'm applying this nice thick layer here and I'm going to go over my pirate ship or regular ship, I, I suppose it doesn't have to be a pirate ship. Um, but I'm just going to go over all of that because the fine tip Sharpie is showing through it to a good extent. And now I'm cleaning off my brush right here on my cloth. Now I'm going to grab a hint of our lighter red and I'm going to mix that in to our previous pigment. That way I know exactly how it'll look on the canvas. So I'm just going to make this a little bit more orange and then I'm going to apply it to the base of the horizon right here. And we're just going to add a little bit of that nice reddish orange glow coming up from the bottom. I'm going to do that with these nice horizontal strokes, get a nice clean blend. Now if you find you're getting something with a lot of brush strokes, just use a softer application style and 
you'll get less impressions. Generally, when we apply a lot of pressure with our brush, we create large markings on either side of our brush and we push the paint apart. And that's not what we want. We just want it to lightly glide and blend. Now, as I get over here, I'm getting farther away from where I want my actual sunset to be. So I'm going to let this be much more orangey red. So I'm just applying it over the entirety, not just the bottom. And I'm applying it with a bit more pressure to apply a little bit of additional paint. That will create a bit of a streaky effect, but I'm just going back over it very easily, very softly with my brush. There we go. Now I do want the base to be a little bit more orange, so I'm just going to take a bit more of it, work that across the bottom, blend again, and every time we apply more, it will become more orange. Of course, we applied a lot of yellow and titanium white, so initially, it's going to be very yellow and have a lot of titanium white. The more orange we add, the more orange it will get. Sometimes it's important to recognize, though, that you need some patience, And we just need to work at it slowly. Here I'm kind of blending the pigment up as you can see with this vertical stroke rather than a horizontal stroke, but I don't want it to end up as a vertical stroke, so this is just kind of to get the paint on there, get it a little bit higher up in the sky, and then I'll come back with a horizontal stroke and just make sure if there are any brush strokes they are all working right across the sky as I want them. Just like that. I'm also using my pinky finger to ground myself in the canvas and make sure that I have a little bit more control here on the canvas. So that, that right there, is a great start to our sky. But now I'm going to work my way up into these clouds and they're going to be a fairly red cloud, but I'm going to start with a darker layer for my red and then build the highlights from the sun's reflection on them. So to get a bit of a darker red, I'm going to use my cadmium red medium hue. I'm going to move that to a separate area here on my palette. I'm going to grab a little bit of the cadmium red light hue. Just give it a little interjection of orange, make the color slightly more interesting. Then I'm going to grab just a hint of Mars black. You can see it's just on the tip of my brush because it's a very strong pigment and I'll work that in. But I don't want it to be purely dark. So I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white, mix that in there. It's going to make it into more of a grayish red, and that's really what I want. So now I'll take this. That'll look really nice. It's not actually a dark color, but it's going to look dark relative to all of the pigments that are beside it. So I'm going to start here at the bottom when I have the most paint and I can create the most nice clean applications. And I'm just going to work it along our edge of light here. There we go. I started to get a little bit scratchy there as you can see so I wet my brush, made sure it was nice and damp, that way I could come back in and do a proper application. There we go. Remember, this is quite dark, but that's okay. We are going to be lightening it. Now, I'm going to take some extra primary red, not primary red, cadmium red medium hue. It's fairly close to primary red. Uh, you could use that as a substitute for sure. I'm going to grab some more Mars black, hint more titanium white, mix up a bit more of that color, but I want it to be slightly darker this time. As I get higher in this cloud, I want it to get darker and darker just like this. And I'm going to ignore the lines that I have currently. Those are for the actual clouds and the highlights. But we're not working on the highlights right now. We're just applying a nice clean base layer. There we go. And then we'll work this over here. have it start to kind of dissipate. We'll have the most of our dominant red clouds occurring in this area. And I'll just build it up a little bit. As you can see, the paint's getting a little bit thin. I'm using more water. And as, a, as an effect, it's becoming more transparent. 
And we don't want that. We want it to get darker because if it's transparent and you see the white through it and it gets lighter, so it goes light to dark to light again, that's not what we want. We want it to be darker. So I'm going to take a little bit of extra Mars black, mix that in there, and then throw that on top. And as you can see, it's quickly remedying that problem we had. Now here, you can see, as I make a stroke, sometimes you get a little bit of a line in between there when you're working with water, and it's because we've thinned the paint to a fairly good extent. The goal here is to take it from the edge of the canvas, or the edge of wherever you're working, so it could be over here, and just work it all the way, and that way you don't have any impressions or imprints there in the canvas, and it's nice and clean. So that's a, a good start to what we need right there, but now it's time to work into the sky, and then from there we can come back in and work over the clouds. And I want to do that because I want to incorporate the highlights of the clouds slightly over the darker sky, and to do that, we, we need that sky there first. So, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to incorporate more colors on my palette, predominantly a blue for the sky, but to do that, I need to clean my water first, because my water right now has some yellows in it, some very delicate colors that, if mixed with blue, would turn into a green. And I don't want that, not to a great extent at least. So I'm going to clean this, I'm going to clean my brush, and then we're going to come back and work on our paint. By that time, this will probably have dried, and that's okay, we can always apply more. I'm not worried about it, and you shouldn't be either. Now that I have my clean water, I'm going to jump right back into the painting, this time, however, I'm going to grab a slightly larger brush. I'm going to grab this one. It is essentially a true inch long, and it is about two and a half centimeters. Now, these are all, these are all quick estimates, um, but again, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm going to begin by slightly dampening my brush. I'm going to grab some cerulean blue, which I've just added to my palette here, and I'm using this because it's a little bit of a cooler blue. It has slight hints of green in it, and it's going to be really nice to complement the rest of the colors in our painting and just expand upon them. So I'm going to move that out to its own spot on the palette. I'm going to grab some Mars black. I'm going to grab a hint of titanium white. And I'm just going to blend these together. And it's going to give me a darker, desaturated blue, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to start applying this right on top of the red and even into it a little bit. I'm okay if I create some sharp lines in the blend because that'll just look like the clouds have some more dominant edges, but it's okay to also do a very smooth transition as well. It's really whatever fits what you'd like at the time. So I'm just blending this all in here, and again you can tell that this area is a bit darker because it's more thick, where this is more thin, and so you can see the canvas showing through. See it's much brighter right there. And we don't really want it to be too too bright, we want it to be a darker sky with the stars showing through. So I'm going to adjust a little bit, I'm going to take a bit of extra Mars black, work that into my mixture. Still going to use a hint of titanium white because I do want it to be a grayed down mixture. I don't want it to be too stark. I'm just going to start applying this again from the left hand side. I'm going to move it over to the right in the painting. Now we are working on a very large area, so for time's sake I'm going to switch over to the largest brush I have here, and again it really doesn't matter too much about the size. This is two inches exactly. I'm going to dip that in there. Make sure that it's nice and damp, but you don't want it too damp because you don't want it to be too transparent. Now the downside to using a brush this large is that you're committing to using a large portion of your palette for it. That said, we can always go back and clean portions of our palette, so it's not the worst thing here. So I'm just going to mix that up I'm going to grab some titanium white, make it a bit more gray, as we have. And then I'm going to apply this, and you can see just how much more quickly it goes on. So, oh. <laughs> when we apply too much pressure, it will move our canvas. That's okay. 
I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure on one side just to keep it in place as I use this large brush. And here I'm not worried too much about my stroke style, whether it's an X-shaped pattern or a horizontal or a vertical, as long as in the end I go back over it with that horizontal stroke. Standing up right now, rather than sitting down because I find it puts a little bit more energy in the painting, get things done a little bit more quickly, but it, it also adds a level of fun to large areas as well. It doesn't feel monotonous, I find, and it just keeps the process really enjoyable. So here we're, again, just adding on this very basic blue. There's no gradient to it at this point. We're just making a nice and easy layer to begin with. And that's really like, it's really how I like to start my paintings. I like to make them nice and easy to begin with, and then we get into our detail work once we're warmed up and ready to tackle that sort of thing. And here we're just going to come down to those clouds, mix it in a little bit, You can see that our mixture has changed slightly as we've painted and it's gotten a little bit brighter. So I just threw a little bit of extra Mars black in there. And we'll just continue the process. There we go. Now I'm going to clean this brush quite well. We've got our main large area done. And I don't think we'll need to use this for anytime soon. Now I'm going to switch back over to this one, a little bit smaller, give me slightly more control, both on the palette and on the painting, and I'm going to mix up some of that darker red that I can then blend back into the blue and just make a nice transition in a couple of areas. So I'm mixing that over the area where I worked on my red previously, and then I'm just going to come up and as you can see, make these nice transitions from one color to the next. Now, if we were using a primary blue or a French ultramarine blue, a warmer blue, we get this red and this blue mixing and they make a purple right in between. But I didn't want too much of that, which is why here today, we're using the cerulean blue instead. That said, if you want a purple, that can be easily achieved by using, again, a French ultramarine blue or a primary blue for the blue in your sky. Here I'm just trying to blend the two, make them a little bit more interesting. There we go. You can see that this area here, it started to strip off a little bit of the paint, so you get this lighter area showing through the canvas, and when that happens, that means you have a lot of water on your brush, on your canvas, in your paint, and if you keep trying to work that over with paint, you're probably just going to strip it more, so at that point, I'd implore you to simply let it dry at least fairly well before you move on to your next step, and this is actually a great time because we have a fairly good blend happening in that area, and we can let it dry for now. In that time, I'm going to move up into the top area here, and I'm going to make it a little bit darker in the corners and edges to create a slight vignette. So I'm going to take some of my Mars Black, mix it in with my blue, take still a hint of that titanium white because I don't want it to become too saturated, but I do want it to be darker than what we've currently worked with, so I'm just working in extra Mars Black. Then I'm going to come up to the top corners, edges, and I'm just going to blend this down. I'm using fairly soft applications, as you can see, so that I don't get any harsh impressions in between the new pigment and the old pigment. There's a fairly subtle transition between the two, which is what we want. 
And we can come back in and do a, a couple of layers as well until we get it exactly how we want it. I generally implore you to do a couple of layers anyway, just because acrylic paints can be fairly thin. And it's great practice as well. It lets you refine, change things up, make them exactly how you want them. And that's one of the real benefits of acrylics. They dry so quickly and they're just so malleable. You might as well take advantage of how malleable they are. So here I'm just making lots of little strokes and it is creating some slight impressions as you can see, but that's actually going to be really nice for a bit of a starry galaxy effect. So you could make it extra smooth by going all the way across or you can have these little impressions by start and stop strokes, as I'm doing right here. All depends on what you'd like in your painting. This is going to give it a little bit more detail, but it isn't necessary. And then I'll do a little bit up in this corner as well, and then blend that down. This is just going to make it slightly more interesting. Now we do want this to be a nice starry sky, and I want to apply the stars before I apply any of the highlighted clouds because I don't want the stars landing on top of the highlighted clouds. So I'm going to clean my brush off quite well here, put it over there, and then I'm going to grab a smaller round-headed brush. And it really doesn't have to be that small, but in case you're curious, it's about three or four millimeters in size going to dip it in water, make sure that it's really wet, take some titanium white, move it out to a new area on my palette, take some extra water, throw it in there, make a very watered down mixture here as you can see. Then I'm going to move my brush on top of my palette, or on top of my painting, I'm going to peel back the bristles, I'm going to launch lots of beautiful little stars into the sky and it creates hundreds of them so quickly it's so much more efficient than tapping them in and you create such small ones that you really couldn't create by that tapping effect. And if you go really close to the canvas you can kind of create lines, make it directional, or if you go farther away it's more of a wholly present application. So two, two different ways of applying it. One's a little more detail oriented. I'm trying to make the stars work from over here and then kind of go that way, create a bit of a leading line in the painting, make it dynamic. There we go. Nice little clusters of stars there. Really beautiful. And we're doing all of this while that area is drying, which is great. So just going back, grabbing more. The more water you have, the more control you will have. You can even do it from farther away, but if you do, make sure that you have a nice backdrop. I have had my computer and other things behind my canvas while I was doing this before, and then later that day I was looking at it, I was like, why is this covered in white paint? It's because I, I just wasn't being mindful of the backdrop. So that's why we're working with this new wonderful setup today. Anyways, from there I'm going to take that smaller brush and I am going to make some small little markings in the sky here. Stars. Just with taps. This is going to create larger impressions. And I'm going to create kind of a, a line in the sky here with these. So I'm trying to be fairly random with my application. I'm moving my stroke and my brush about. Just creating something subtle but interesting. You'll be able to get many more impressions of the larger the canvas you're using. I'm not really using a large canvas, but it's larger than what I normally used in these tutorials. I'm going to start to use larger canvases just so we can incorporate slightly more detail. Make them a little bit more interesting. 
And if you add some stars that you feel pop a little bit too much, you can take some water on your brush, go over that area, apply that water, and then just take them off really easily. It's a great, efficient process. Then you come back in, and sometimes when you apply paint, your brush and the bristles will kind of condense in a certain way. If you find your round-headed brush starts to get a square effect, start to use a corner of it to get those nice sharp markings again. There we go. And we can have them kind of meeting down here, both of our applications. It's a nice start to our stars. We'll definitely be going up to that sky again, but I want to work on this area and the ship so I know how much detail I can incorporate in there without it being overdone. So, I'm going to take another little break, clean my brushes really well, my water, and we'll come back in and we'll work on the highlights in our clouds. We now have clean brushes, clean water, and our underlayer for our clouds is just about dry. So, I'm going to switch now over to this slightly smaller square-headed brush, and for measuring shake, it is about half an inch. So now, I'm going to take this, make sure that it's a little bit damp, grab some of my cadmium red light hue, I'm going to mix up an orange. I'm going to do it right beside our previous one because I want to use it as an example, but I want something slightly darker. So, for this, I'm going to grab a hint of Mars Black, so I'm just using the corner of my brush to grab it, and as you can see, it's very powerful. So add a bit more orange, and then we'll go and grab some titanium white as well, and there we have a bit of a desaturated, but thick, nice orange to play with. It's a little bit darker than the one we had before, so it's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to start at the base of my clouds, as you can see, and then I'm going to work my way up and create highlights for the bottoms of all of the clouds that are kind of a little bit farther down. So I work my line and then I kind of come up a little bit and I take kind of a Z-shaped pattern, just like that. And I try to make lots of them. The more I make, the more interesting it will look. And I try to keep the bottom of the stroke very sharp and then I kind of blend up the top a little bit, make that slightly softer. Here we have a bit of a darker area naturally, and I will use that to my advantage, I won't try to fight it. So we'll leave that area darker, and then we'll add a highlight right above it, just like that. Wipe off some of that extra paint and water, and then grab a little bit more. Then we'll come back, you can see how fresh this paint is looks so much more vibrant and opaque when you go back and you grab more paint. And I'll just kind of bring this up into the blues of the sky a little bit and create this interesting effect up there as well. Blend each part of the sky together and just bring it all into a nice cohesive piece. There we go. coming along really well. I like that a lot. Going over some of the more thin areas a couple of times to make sure that it all pops the way we want it to. That said, it all doesn't have to pop the exact same way because some areas are going to be lighter and darker than others. There we go. As I blend it off into this distant area, I let it get darker and darker just because it's farther away from the light and we create a little bit more depth of that gradient of light as we move to the other side. Now I've almost just about run out of paint here, so I'm going to mix up some more. Accidentally dropped my brush in some darker paint there, some blue, so wipe that off. There we go. Grab some more of our titanium white, make it nice and thick and then re-add some saturation by throwing some of that orange back in there. 
blending it out quite well here on my palette because, again, we don't want one area here to be white, another to be kind of red, another to be kind of black. We want it to be nice and consistent. So then I'm going to start again at the bottom, thicken some areas that need it, and then come up again, making small impressions up here. You want some to be really large, you want some to be more segmented. And show that there are different kinds of clouds and just make it much more interesting. There we go. It's coming along really well here. I like this a lot. It's becoming quite interesting. And then we'll just do a couple kind of trailing off into the, the sky here. If you want it to be a much more opaque application, where you get the color to be much more vibrant and thick, don't apply much pressure with your brush because the more pressure you apply, the more it's going to spread out the paint and the more thin it's going to get. So you'd, you'd think the more pressure you apply, the more paint you apply, the more opaque it gets, but it's really kind of the opposite and counterintuitive in that way. So try to keep that in mind as you're working through this. Now here, I'm cleaning off my brush quite well because I'm done with it for the current time and I don't want any of that acrylic paint drying on there because it essentially becomes fairly plasticky and once it's dried on your brush, there really isn't much hope of getting it back. I've had this brush for about two years, but that's because I take good care of it and I make sure that I take that paint off before it dries. Now I'm going to switch to my really small square headed brush. This is not even a quarter of an inch. I, I suppose it's just about half a centimeter. And I'm going to go over here. And I, I talk about inches and centimeters just because I know everybody doesn't use the same unit of measurement. And we might as well cover more. Now here I'm going to create a bit of a brighter orange. So I'm doing it right beside the orange I just used. I'm using more titanium white. I'm using more of my orange. I'm not using any Mars black and I'll also use a hint of our yellow as well. And then I'm going to go to the bottom of our clouds and work this up a little bit. Right now the highlights are still fairly wet on these areas so it's going to blend a great deal but that's okay because it'll be subtle beginnings and let us really assess how much of it we want and where we want it. Also going to grab about a mixture of it and the old color and I'm going to create some subtle clouds here in the distance. I'll blend them over and connect them with this cloud over here. And this is really just going to give it some extra depth, some extra interest. I'm using the corner of the square headed brush to create some sharp little small ones. Very, very tiny impressions on the canvas. Not large at all. And I'll create some over here as well. Like this a lot. Whenever I do sunsets, they always seem to come together with these little clouds and markings. You can see how they blend down into the background as well. And that kind of hazy orange you see on the horizon just makes so much more sense. I like that a lot. But with that said, this has all started to dry so we can take a bit more of our orange, our yellow, our white. I say orange, it is, it is a cadmium red light. It isn't a true cadmium orange. Um, it's kind of, kind of in between, but it works really well. And then I'll throw this in here. When you add a lot of titanium white to a red, generally becomes a pink, which is why we are using the extra yellow, because that will help it maintain more of an orange. There we go. That's quite noticeable. We still want it subtle to a point, 
but it's nice to have that extra color blend and highlight in there. There we go. Really beautiful. You want the base of these clouds to be the brightest because they are closest to the light and then they can get darker and more orange as you move farther up. Adding hints of our highlight to these ones as well. There we go. For now though, I think that's a great start to our clouds. And now we can move on in the painting. And as we move on in the painting, we of course need to clean our water and our brushes. So I'm going to take yet another quick break. And these quick breaks are great because they let you step back from the painting, let you stop focusing so heavily, so deeply on a specific area and then come back and look at it as a whole, which is so important because we can easily get tunnel vision while we're painting, focus on one area, make it great but not fit in with the rest of the painting. So it's great to step back and look at it because that's when we get a true, proper perspective. Now that the first layer of our sky is finished, and I say first layer because I do want to go back in and add some extra vibrant blues into the sky, and I do want to go back over some of these clouds, but I, I want to wait until, again, I have a good vision of the rest of the canvas so that I know that I'm not going to overdo it. And in between that time, I'm now going to go back down into the bottom of the painting, and we're going to work on the water here. This is a very large area, so we're going to use a fairly large brush. I'm going to grab this big one again. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and, nice and dry at this point. It was washed well, so it does have a little bit of water in it, which is why I'm not going to dip it back into our water because it's already got a little bit on there. But I'm going to mirror, essentially, a lot of the colors that I have in the sky down into the water. I'm not going to mirror the actual image itself, but I'm going to grab those colors and the essence of it. So I'm going to start by grabbing some of my yellow, moving it here into the yellows and oranges of my palette. And if it mixes with them a little bit, that is okay. I'm going to grab a bit of our titanium white a little bit of our cadmium red light hue, and just mix these up. Then, going to draw a line on the horizon, and just see how that looks in comparison to the colors we currently have on the sky. And it looks quite good. It's a little bit orange, it's a little bit saturated, so we're going to bring it down a little bit by taking some extra titanium white, some extra yellow, and we'll just interject that in there as well. See how that turns out. I do want the sky to be brighter than the water. The water is always darker than the sky, so it's okay if it's a little bit more orange, a little bit more red, but I don't want it to be too, too much. So I'm just working these back and forth. I'm going to grab a hint, and I do mean a hint of Mars Black, Maybe you can't even see that on the brush, but it's just on the corner. I'm going to work that in there. When you mix a yellow and black, you generally get a green, and this definitely is hints of green. So we're going to work in some extra orange, bring it back to a warmer tone, but we're just essentially trying to create a slightly darker orange for our water here. And now I'll try this. You can see it's a bit more of a beige. It's all about trial and error getting those pigments just right. But it really is a nice start here. The canvas keeps running away. I might have to put a little nail in the back here to keep it in place so I don't have to keep holding it as I am. Just a food for thought. But now I'm going to grab a bit of that orange that we have already on our palette going to apply that right down here because we have some of this red that's reflecting and I'll grab a hint of that red and work it in actually. 
hint of the orange and work it in and just try to make it a little less yellow as we move down the canvas. I'm not too worried about my actual application at this point. However, if you want it to be nice and smooth, just go over it with some horizontal strokes like this and it will quickly remedy itself. That said, I do want this to be a bit darker. So we are going to do some additional layering. So grab some red, some orange, and again, just a tap of Mars Black. And we'll work this in. Starting at the very bottom, and then I work my way up a little bit. And I'm working with these short, small strokes so that I have a bit more control and I can kind of gauge how everything's going slightly better. Again, it'll make the application look slightly more segmented than a clean stroke, but that's okay. I'm going to add some movement into this water anyway, so it'll just be good extra texture and technique if it remains. Now, with that said, that's a good start, but I want this side of the canvas to be a bit darker. So once I just kind of move this over the boat here, I'm going to mirror more of these colors. So it starts with a bit of an orange because of that, being fairly loose with it, not too worried. And then we'll get into some darker pigments. And we talked about blues mixing with reds. This red and this blue kind of make this darker color. It's not very purple, but it, it would be much more so if you were using a primary blue or a French ultramarine blue. But here, we're just going to try to mix that. Again, this would be a nice purple if we were using the other colors and you're welcome to use them. But for our purposes here, we're going to avoid that really poppy purple. Just going to mix up a bit of a dark blue here to apply at the bottom. And as you can see, it has hints of green in it. That's occurring because our brush does have some yellow on and in it, and that's going to play a role. And then I'm just going to blend it over into the oranges. I'm going to do that through little strokes like this, back and forth, create a neat little pattern, texture, and move my canvas a little bit too. Now I'm going to sit down because I want it to be a little bit more detail oriented. I'm going to grab some primary, not primary red, oh my. Using new colors here in the acrylic lessons for the first time. Cadmium red, medium hue, fairly close to a primary red. But I'm applying that there taking out a little bit of the green. The more red and blue we have, the closer we'll get to purple, but we won't really achieve a, a true purple with this red and this blue. So here I'm just applying it. And we'll start moving it a little bit further this way. Again, the more it blends into this area, the more green we'll get, and that is okay. Definitely doesn't look bad. Again, lots of little strokes or drags here. You can hear that fun sound of the bristles clapping at the end. You know, I think, I think a lot of people really like painting initially, but then there's so many little things in it that you just kind of fall in love with. That's one of them. But I'm going to retire this very large brush for the meantime, so I'm going to take off all of my paint, let that dry, and I'm going to switch over to this one yet again because I want to work with a little bit more detail. So I'm just going to start by going over everything again, making sure I have a nice application and filling in areas where I, I simply don't. This area is still a little bit white and we can
fill that in right now. Then I'm going to drag this out more, create some additional details in the water, just using this predominantly horizontal stroke. Occasionally I'm blending these up and down into one another, so I'm going horizontal stroke, horizontal stroke, connecting line, connecting line. And then as I move closer and closer to the sunset, I'm going to use longer strokes. I'm going to make them more thin. I'm going to let them be more transparent so I'm applying less pressure. And I'm just going to let them dissipate into that background until we have almost no effect. And that's because in the foreground you're going to see a lot of detail. You're going to see the difference in waves and movements and waters, but as you get farther away, it kind of blends optically and you get something that's much more smooth and much more blended. And then in the very distance, you don't see any of that detail at all. So it's something to consider as you're working on this for sure. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more Mars Black into the corner create that vignette effect, so here I'll just grab that, work that in nice and easy. Work it in from the edge, and then I'll use the sharp edge of my brush to create those little details back and forth again. Here I will blend this up a little bit more. Have a good mix of our colors. Again, this area does need to be darker than the sky. There we go. Just taking a couple steps back and looking at the canvas now from a distance, so that, again, I don't get that tunnel vision and I get a very accurate look at what I'm doing and what I'm trying to achieve. And what I'm seeing here is now I have this really nice red and this really nice green kind of complementing one another. We have this orange and this blue which are working really well together. And we've kind of spaced things out really well. What I would like to improve, however, is this area right here. While it's darker than the sky as it should be. It's much more orange than the sky. The sky really has yellows, a little bit of peachy orange, some reds, and then some peachy oranges again in the highlights. But this is more of a true orange and I want to get something that's a little bit closer to this yellow and this peachy orange. So that's my next goal for the water and to do that I really need to clean my water because I have been working with blues and if I tried to work with yellow and the titanium white right now, and I mix them in this water, it would turn into a green. And then I'd have green right here where I really don't want it. I like it here, I like it here a lot. It balances the red really well, but right there needs to be yellow. So again, I'm going to clean my tools, I'm going to come back, and we're going to work on this area right here. Now that we have our water clean, our brushes clean, we can get back into our water there. So for this, I'm going to take the smaller square headed brush and I'm going to make sure that it's a little bit more dry because the yellow is such a thin pigment and I, if we added more water to it at this point, it would just become so transparent. That's not really what I want right now. So here I have this fairly bright mixture. It's a lot of titanium white. It's a little bit of that yellow. And I'm going to apply that right here and I'm going to begin initially with these lines back and forth, kind of horizontal, working them from left to right, and I'm allowing it to dissipate as I get more over here because we get to a little bit of a darker area. But I'm just going to work horizontally, as you can see, and now blend downwards. This is going to brighten what we've been working with, now I can grab a little bit more water because I, I do want to blend a, a wet layer into a dry layer. 
And as you can see, we have that nice smooth gradient, smooth transition now. And we have a much brighter yellow. I am going to work a hint of orange into it this time. I don't want too much. And I say orange. It's a uh, cadmium red light hue. It just looks a little bit like orange. And we'll incorporate some saturation back into it. We used all of that titanium white to make sure we had a nice thick bright layer, but titanium white does strip the saturation from our pigments. So here we're just applying it back in to that newly added bright layer. There we go. Really glows in the distance like that. Like it a lot. Going to take a couple of steps back, give it a honest good look and it really does look like it has a bit of a glow to it now, which is nice. But I do want it a little bit darker. So this, this might be one of those areas in the painting that just teaches us, you know, you don't get it right the first time, and it's worth it to go back over it a couple. So here I have some more orange, it's a bit darker, I'm using the cadmium red medium hue. And I'm just working this back over those really bright oranges and glow ears. I want this strip right here to be really bright. That's great. But I want this to be a little bit more subtle. And it's important to note that we are working with acrylic paints and acrylic paints are naturally going to be fairly reflective. So it's going to catch some light and look a little bit brighter than everything else naturally just because that's what it does. And that's okay. But it needs to, we need to remind ourselves rather that because of that, we don't need to darken it too much because as it dries, it's going to look more like that anyway. We just need to darken it a little bit and then kind of trust that it's going to dry appropriately. And that's what I'm going to do there. Now, with that said, I'm really liking how this is all going. You can see this line that I've drawn with a fine tip sharpie. And that's an issue you can have because it does show through, especially light layers. But I do have a, a good trick to kind of covering that up. And it shows through light layers, but it doesn't, doesn't really show through dark layers as much. So I'm going to take my red, I'm going to take my blue, I'm going to mix up, again, what would be a purple, but is not going to be with these. It's much more of a desaturated version of whichever the other is. So here we'll make it a little bit more red. And then I'll take a hint of Mars Black and I'll grab a hint of Titanium White. And then we'll add some land in the distance. I'm going to start on the horizon line and then I'll kind of work it up to create some interesting shapes as you can see right here. Kind of something in the distance for that ship to get to and aim for. Leave a little bit of a, a break there. This will be a nice extra detail in the painting. Gives you something else to explore. There we go. Then I'll bring this back on over my ship. I'll still probably be able to see my ship quite well because those lines are fairly distinct. Using lots of control here to get a fairly straight line. If it's not perfectly straight, that's okay. This landmass can reflect down into the water a little bit, which would make it not perfectly straight. So don't worry about it too much. And if you want it perfectly straight, I recommend getting some green tape, applying a line, and then painting, and then just peeling the green tape off. It shouldn't hurt the canvas at all, or the paint, and you'll just make sure that you do get a straight line. But again, it really wasn't something I was really after because there's just enough reason for the reflection to be showing. And I'm not going to worry about it. 
There we go. In fact, you know what? Over here on this side, I'm going to paint in the reflection. There we go. I like that. I like that a lot. Just an added detail. Now, we have enough color in our painting to kind of judge where we should go back to. So, I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush and I'm going to add a little bit of our cadmium red light hue, a little bit of our cadmium yellow deep hue, and some titanium white. I'm going to mix up a nice bright pigment there. And then I'm going to go back and reapply some highlights to our clouds, predominantly on the bottoms. Some people like to work on their paintings and finish an area and then move on to the next, but I find it's much more cohesive, works much better every piece of it together, if you kind of go back to areas and make sure they balance the ones that you've just incorporated. And that's why I like to not entirely finish an area when I'm working on it. I like to leave room to go back to it, and I like to kind of keep that door open for further work. And that's what we're doing right now. We're just going back in, adding in some extra highlights, just making it pop a little bit better. Cleaning up some areas. Again, I'm trying to apply this to the bottom of the application, and then I blend upwards keeping the bottom nice and sharp. If you need to do a, a real blend, just make sure you have some extra water on your brush and then it'll be so much easier. Now we're fairly fairly long into our tutorial here, so I would like to mention again that the channel is now completely advertisement free. There aren't any pesky ads in the middle of the video deterring you, taking attention away, kind of bringing you mentally to a different area, and I'm able to do that thanks to the wonderful support over on Patreon. So if you are enjoying the lesson, if you feel like you're learning, you're, you're really getting something out of this and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so over on the Patreon page where you'll also get the reference photo, the digital sketch, exclusive extra hour long lessons just like this, and access to our Facebook page where you can share your version of this drawing as well. I shouldn't say Facebook page, it's a new exclusive Facebook group for all of the patrons. So if you're interested in any of that, I very much appreciate it. This channel does exist because of wonderful people like those over on Patreon. And all of the patrons out there, thank you greatly for supporting me, getting us to this point, and now, now creating larger, more detailed canvases, pieces just like this. With that said, that's enough extra detail there, I think, in the clouds. It's time to add a little bit extra into the sky. And for this, we're going to take a classic brush. We're going to take the older square-headed brush. This is one where the bristles kind of leaf off in varying directions. It is synthetic. All of these are, are synthetic. Um, but what I like to do is I like to take a regular square-headed brush like this, one that's kind of old and rugged, and I kind of peel back all of the bristles until it creates something that's very augmented. And that way, when I make a tapping motion with it, I get all these different implications on the canvas. So we're going to create a brighter sky here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take some of our blue that we have, I'm going to apply that in the blue section of our palette. All of these darker colors have dried now, so I'm not too worried about it. But this blue, void of white, void of black, is the most vibrant blue we can have with this palette. So if we were to tap this on, just like this, we get these very vibrant splashes of blue. So I'm doing it right around our star lines because that's really where I want the attention to be. And it's just going to make it pop 
so much more. There we go. Having it trail off over there. Create some clusters of it, doing this tapping effect. And I try to rotate my brush as I tap because it's just going to make it so much more interesting. Here I'll grab some extra titanium white. This will desaturate it a little bit, but it'll look like it's a little bit more cohesive with the rest of the painting. I just wanted to show you how saturated we could get it. And now I'm going to go over a couple of those areas again. This is going to create a very bright, saturated blue, but not as saturated as it was without the titanium white. It will be brighter though. So it's all about finding that balance of brightness and saturation. That's really pretty. I love that. Create different little clusters of it throughout. But I'm trying to keep that main two line streak still fairly prominent. If you go over some of the white stars, that's okay. You can go back in and add those in again. Or you can just leave it as the blue, which is quite pretty. But now you can see it really, really lights up, and I like that a lot. We'll go back in and add in some extra stars by taking some titanium white, moving that right beside our blue, and then we'll just work in our lines again. This will just create so much detail so quickly. So we created stars using so many different effects here. We used the smaller round-headed brush to create all the small ones, and we did the tapping effect with it to create the larger ones. Now we're using this tapping effect with the older square-headed brush, more distressed square-headed brush, to create these effects as well. And they all accumulate to create a truly interesting sky. Just like that. A true sea of stars top a regular sea. So here, I'm going to clean off my brush quite well now. Make sure that it doesn't dry with any paint on it. That way we can keep using it in the future. Though if you were to have any paint dry on any brush, this would definitely be the brush for it because it is meant to be just so distressed and interesting as it is. Now looking back to this, I do feel like this area yet again could be a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna take this smaller square headed brush, grab some white, a little bit of yellow, and I'm not going to grab any water at this point because I want this layer to be a little bit more thick so that it actually covers that darker orange, and I want to avoid the water because it has some green and blue in it. So we're just going to apply this, as you can see. We're applying wet paint over dry paint, so it won't blend or apply as easily as normal, but I'm applying it at the top to begin with. And then as I start to run out of paint, I'll move down a little bit. That way I get a little bit of a blend. It's a bit softer. There we go. I like that a lot. That worked out really well. The true test, of course, is going to be looking at it through the camera viewfinder. So we'll do that now. And yes, that is, that is perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. I'm really, really happy with that. So from there, now that we've added the touch-ups to there and there, and this is dry, we can go and add the touch-ups to our water. But for that, I'm going to want clean water. So yet again, I'm going to clean my brushes, I'm going to clean my water, I'm going to let that dry, then we'll be right back and we'll work on that. And soon, we will also work on our ship, which is very exciting considering how well the background is turning out. So, I'll be right back. Now that we have clean water yet again, we're going to jump back into our canvas, this time using our smallest square-headed brush because it's great for detail work and those sharp lines are going to be great for adding the effect of little water and waves. So here I'm going to take some titanium white and I'm going to start by taking a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, mixing up a nice, really bright 
pigment here. This is going to be for the tops of the waves, the water that comes up and catches a lot of light. It's not very dense, so it can be quite bright. And I'm going to work this predominantly in my foreground because you're not going to see the waves truly in the background. So this is going to be little, almost like end shapes that are extended. They're fairly wide. I'm trying to do this over the orange areas. Just like that. And this is just going to give it the slight effect of movement, make it a little bit more interesting. Give us an extra detail there in the water. The more you do, the more really interesting it'll look. You were just kind of casting light throughout the sea. And I'm making lots of them in different areas. Trying not to create a straight line, but jump around a lot. Create lots of intricacy. And I said I was making an N shape in most of these. Sometimes I'm kind of connecting to, making more of an M. Just kind of playing with it. Creating something interesting. Here I am, I'm sitting down, and I know sometimes when I'm sitting down or standing up, just because I feel like it creates a different atmosphere for painting, and sometimes one is more, more effective than the other. There we go. So we're just painting in all of this beautiful golden light. She'll come off of this really well. In the distance, it's going to be more long horizontal lines. There we go. Now this is very detail-oriented work, and it's easy to again kind of distort your view of the rest of the painting and get very zoomed into this and making it as detailed and great as possible. But if it's too detailed, then it might overshadow this and we don't want that. So I'm going to take a step, I'm going to move back and again, just get a very honest look at it. Now that I have the majority of my applications in, I'm going to do a couple while standing up just because it's going to give me a slightly farther perspective, help keep me honest with the amount of detail I'm incorporating, and help me see the painting as a whole, rather than just this area and its details. There we go. Now as we move over into this area, we're going to need to change our color a little bit because all of that yellow isn't going to work as well over there. So this time, let's take a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and a lot of titanium white. Mix up a new color. And we'll try dropping that in right around here. It's a little bit more gray, it's a little bit cooler, which is exactly what we want. And then around the boat, we need to show that the water is kind of rippling off of it and behind it. So I'm going to create all these little tapping marks. It's a bit of a tap and a drag following the boat. And they can connect to the other waves. And this will just create a little bit of extra detail and show that it's creating an effect in the water. You can connect some of them, create these longer lines, just like that, that kind of trail off and move to kind of a center point back here. But it'll show movement, which is nice. There we go. 
And then when we get farther away from the boat, we just get back to those horizontal lines in the middle. And of course, the end shapes, the wide end shapes throughout. And then you want to kind of blend this into the gold ones a little bit as well. That way it's not like half and half. There's this cohesive area in the middle here that is both. There we go. Here I'm just going to connect some of these trails and do other waves. And this will make a lot more sense when we've actually painted in the boat as well. There we go though. I like that a lot. Here, just going to throw a little bit more of that golden yellow highlight at the back, make some larger ones. And again, just try to connect them, make it a little bit more cohesive. That's a really nice effect. I like that. Okay. So with that, well, we might want to go back in and touch up the water a little bit later in the same way we did the sky. I think it's time we work on our boat here. And I'm going to take this opportunity to take my fine tip Sharpie. I'm just going to redraw in all of these lines. I've lost a couple of them in here. I'm going to go back, look at the digital sketch, look at the reference photo, and just draw that in. Again, you can find the digital sketch and the reference photo to help you with this over on Patreon. I know this is kind of a more complicated subject, so it can be useful, but you can go check that out if you're interested, or you could just rewind the video to the start and maybe use that as a reference as well. Up to you, but I'm going to take a break draw that back in, and then we'll be right back in a second for more painting. Now I've added two colors to the palette for our ship here, and that is a burnt sienna and a burnt umber. I'm using two different brands of paint here. The burnt sienna is by Windsor and Newton, and the burnt umber is by Liquitex Basics. And I generally use Liquitex Basics for acrylics. I really love this brand. I think that it produces a fantastic, affordable paint. However, I generally use Burnt Sienna in my oil paintings, and I wanted to start incorporating the color into my acrylics. I found it in Windsor & Newton. I love Windsor & Newton for oil, so I figured I'd give it a try here with acrylics, and we're going to test it out here today. So, I have these two colors because they're nice colors for wood and that sort of thing. We have a brighter color, we have a darker color, but let's begin with this part of the ship and then work our way back. In the same way we would a landscape, that way everything is layered on top of it appropriately. So I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush, make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to take some of that new brown that we have, I'll take some titanium white, mix that in there, and I'll just test this at the very end of our ship here and just see how the color looks. It actually matches the color of the water extremely well and that's fantastic. That, that's great. It's nice that we have something so cohesive here. However, we don't want it to match to the point where it just simply blends in and we don't really notice it. So I'm going to take some extra titanium white. I'm going to make it extra bright so that it stands out against those very beautiful oranges of the water. And I'm just going to blend this back a little bit into that rest of our ship and color. There we go. Now this is all fairly detail-oriented stuff, so we're using the smaller square-headed brush to maneuver around it. I'm going to take some of that brighter burnt sienna there. I'm going to take a little bit of our Mars Black, I'm going to take some Titanium White, mix up a darker color, and then I'm going to work in the lip of the boat here. This is much darker because it's receiving no real light, just kind of reflected light. 
and we'll just work this up in the ship as well. There we go. Now we need to work on the floor of the ship, which will be even darker, so I'll just grab a, a hint more of our Mars black. And now I'll work that in right below. So you can see it, it's fairly similar, so we'll grab a little bit more black. We don't want it to be a pure black, but that's a, a nice in-between right there. Now I'm going to move a little bit farther here on the boat, and this area is the back of this large piece. So it's opposite to the light, so it's going to receive a lot less light, and it's going to be extremely dark. So I'll grab some extra Mars Black there, mix it in, get a little bit more of our burnt umber, or raw umber, no, <laughs> burnt sienna, that's it. And I'll just I'll work that in right there, nice and easy. Now, looking at these two in contrast with this, it's very stark and it's not wholly cohesive. I like the colors, I like the idea of it, but I think it could be a little bit better done. So I'm going to darken the back of this by taking a little bit of our burnt umber, mixing that with our burnt sienna, creating again a dark but vibrant pigment, taking a little bit of our Mars black, I'll apply this to the back of this piece, take off the extra paint from my brush, and then blend it forward. You can see it's saturating it quite nicely. It's creating a nice new color. There we go. We can go back and touch up all of the colors of our ship a little bit later on, but let's continue moving on through our ship. And let's do so with, again, a good combination of those two browns and Mars black. I'm going to work on the bottom of my ship first. So I'm just applying this using those nice sharp edges of this smaller square headed brush to apply it. It's fairly saturated right now because we don't have a lot of Mars black or titanium white, so we can try that, just see how it looks. Make it a little bit more gray, a little bit more thick. And that actually turned out really nice. I like that a lot. So much so, I think I'm going to extend it up here as well. Yeah, that worked out really well. Painting, even when you know it very well, is still exploratory. You're trying different things, you're amalgamating different things, you're taking chances, and that's really a lot of the fun of it. It's just so exploratory. You paint these places that you can explore, but you also explore the medium and the technique in itself, and it's... The process is very reflective of the subject matter in which we paint, which is really interesting. Um, so now I'm going to take this slightly brighter burnt sienna. I'm going to add a highlight here. And I'm going to blend it to the back of the this part of the ship. Going to make that brighter burnt sienna, burnt umber color. Just mixed with a little bit of titanium white here. And now I'll work on the side of the boat here. And I'll go over the windows, I'm not too worried about that. We can repaint them, they're very simple shapes. But here we're just picking a color for the side of the boat. It'll get some additional reflective light. It'll be brighter than this because it's higher up and it doesn't have a shadow from it being cast down. We'll incorporate some of those browns into the back here, make it a little bit more saturated, but also a little bit darker as well as you move into the back of it. And now it matches this top area quite well. Let's take those yet again, grab some titanium white, and we can work on these top areas right here. Starting with just that color to kind of try, see how it looks, then I'll grab some of that titanium white, mix it in. This will be very bright, I want it to be, 
It'll be catching more light than most of it. There we go. And then we can mix that in up here as well. Can take a little bit of it, see how it works over here. The answer is quite nicely. And now I want to mix a little bit of a darker brown again for this back area and just have it progress into the foreground of the boat a little bit more gradually. There we are. Lots of depth. Lots of trial and error. Now here, I'll grab some more of that burnt sienna, burnt umber, mix it with our titanium white. We'll go up to the top here. Just fill this in. You can see I'm moving my hand in different orientations to find the easiest application where I can get the sharpest line, where I can have the most control. And so we kind of start again with that just very flat base layer. We'll grab that some titanium white, make it a little bit brighter here in the front because it's closest to the light. And then we'll grab some of that darker mixture, it started to dry, I'll mix up a little bit more. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, Mars black. I'll add it at the bottom and towards the back, and then I'll blend it up and across. There we are. Nice, smooth transition there. Then we have all of these little detailed railings, which are going to be a lot of fun. And for that, I'm going to take an even mixture of both of my browns and some titanium white. This is going to give us a very thick application and one that's close to all of these nice little highlights. I'm just going to apply this to the top and then on the railings themselves. There we go. Can take this color, work it into more of the boat. And the idea is that we're just constantly taking colors that we're incorporating in different areas and reincorporating them in other areas we've worked on to make it more cohesive and interesting. Here we created an extra little piece to the boat that we didn't even draw in initially. It just kind of worked because we were willing to continue to play with our colors and create something interesting. Now here's a little bit of an area separating kind of the front and the back of the boat. It's facing this way, so it's very far away from the light. It is in the opposite direction of the light, so I'm going to grab some Mars Black Burnt Umber. I'm going to grab a hint of Titanium White just to make it a little bit more thick and so it isn't hyper-saturated. And then we'll just paint that in. There we go. Take that color into the floor as well. Worked out really well. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to work it in the railings, the backs of them, because the fronts are going to be receiving highlights, but the backs aren't going to be receiving any light. So this will make it look a little bit more interesting and three dimensional as well. And then I'll take the same color and I'll continue to add it to the backs of these pieces of the boat as well and just further create some extra depth through those. Now this is a very detail oriented area and because of that again we're focusing and we need to make sure we look at the big picture and while I can kind of just visually move my eyes around the painting like this I need to be able to step back and look at it in contact. So that's what I'm going to do, putting my brush down making sure I do this really every 15 minutes just to make sure it's all very cohesive. So I'm looking at the boat. I think it looks quite nice. I think it could be a little bit darker, especially around the bottom because it kind of blends to a point. So I'm sitting down again because it's just, it's a very detailed area and you want that extra control. You don't need large kind of manic strokes to imply movement. 
It's very detailed. So I'm taking some more Mars Black and we're just going to darken it. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to move in some Burnt Umber, some Burnt Sienna. This is a very dark mixture. It's not a pure black, but it's, it's getting closer. I'm going to apply this to the bottom of the boat. I'm going to apply this in between these two compartments towards the back as well. Maybe even on the bottom right here. It's really going to define the edges quite nicely. This area, and I think I'm going to make the railings entirely dark. Really, these ones are facing this way, so they're really going to get reflected light from the water, which isn't that much, so I'm okay making these much darker, but they'll stand out to a, a better point, and we won't have something that blends in with the water too, too much. Now I'm going to do a wash over the boat, and a wash is a very thin layer of paint that goes over pre-existing applications that adds a color but does not change form or line. So we're essentially just augmenting the color, we're not changing the detail. So we take a lot of water, we go, we grab a color, we'll grab just some burnt umber right here, move that out into our palette, again grab a lot of water, mix that up, and then we apply it over our pre-existing application. It's just going to make it a little bit darker and a little bit more rich. And this will just make it pop slightly better in the painting. So with that, I'm going to just add a little bit more layering to our railing. Nice and easy. Like that a lot. Throwing in some extra details and things. And now I'm going to move on to the back of the boat. So for this, it's going to be very dark. It is in the complete opposite direction of the light. So we are starting with some Mars Black, some Burnt Umber, some Raw Umber. I'm going to start on the bottom, where it will be the darkest. And I'll just work on my little compartments as I go. And something that's really important to note while these are different areas of the boat, you saw that they were drawn to be existing in their own space to have separation between them. Just because there's that detail there in real life doesn't mean it's going to show up, especially in very dark settings like what this will have. So while there might be multiple compartments, multiple details in the drawing, in the ship itself, it's important that we let those go for the sake of the image because it's going to look much more natural, it's going to make much more sense if it's all really this very dark pigment instead. And that's really what you want, that's the goal when you're working on these paintings, right? It isn't to capture the most amount of detail, it's to do the subject the most justice. And sometimes when it's in the context of this landscape and this lighting in this situation, that is to actually give it less detail. So I'm making the entirety of the back of this ship very dark. Again, there's a separation in these two pieces. I'm not, I'm not altering the pigment. I'm not changing it. I want it to be stark. I want it to be dark. I want this all to match quite well. There we go. Now there is this side piece, however, that's going to get that reflected light from this part of the water that this is all getting. So for that, we want it to be a little bit darker than what we're currently working with on the side. So I'll grab some burnt sienna, burnt umber, mix it in with that Mars black, but I'll grab a hint of titanium white and work that in as well. Now we can draw in the siding of the ship with our paint here. There we go. I'm 
Just like that. Nice and easy. Of course, we can define the edges more by adding a slight, a greater highlight, taking that titanium white, dragging it more along the edges, and then we blend it back in to the rest of the subject. Like that. Now, from there, we're going to have a lot of windows in here, but I want it to dry fully before we get to that point. So I'm going to go and work on the mask and all of that. For that, I'm going to take more of that really dark pigment. So Mars Black, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, mix the three fairly evenly. It's just going to give us a very rich, dark pigment. Really nice with all of the oranges around. And then we'll paint this in. I'm going to be applying a very minimal amount of pressure with my brush here because the less pressure you add, the smaller your stroke is going to be. The more pressure you add, the more your bristles are going to expand and create something much more large and visually dominant. That's not what we want through the mast. I made the bottom of the mast much larger. I'm letting it get smaller and smaller as we get to the top. It has all of these little intricate pieces. Again, you can see I'm moving my hand, the orientation of it, so that I get the best angle to create the sharpest line. Here, I'm going to start at the top, make that nice and sharp, and then I'll come down again. We got fairly lucky with the setting here. With it being sunset, you get more of a silhouetted subject. And while it isn't a silhouetted subject, while we do have a lot of detail in it, you do get to make some of these subjects slightly more simple in color and just makes the painting a little bit easier. It also makes it stark, which can be, which can evoke more emotion, which is nice. Here I'm just kind of following different lines. I am continuously dipping my brush in water, as you can see as well. And I'm doing that because it's going to help me create these smooth lines. It's going to make the paint slightly more transparent, but I think that's entirely worth it. That just means you might have to go over an area once or twice and that's okay. This is very detailed, delicate work. Take your time. Don't rush. Do it justice. We spent all of this time on the background and all of that. Now we're really putting in the attention to detail and making it all come together. There we are. Remember, if you did lose portions of this boat in the painting process, you can find the digital sketch up over on Patreon to help you draw all of these intricate, detailed areas out. And you can see the reference photo I used, which, again, I changed the boat a little bit, make it more to my liking, why not? Um, but you can use that to incorporate more details if you want, or just different ones, make it your own, right? So lots of, lots of different option with that. But again, I know the digital sketch is very useful to a lot of people, so I figured I'd remind you if you're working on this and you're finding, you know what, I could, I could use a, a little bit more direction visually. There we go. Just kind of painting in the masts and all of the cloth as well, those detailed areas. There we are. Like that a lot. Really starting to come together. Can't tell you how happy I am with this one. We're lucky here in that we're using a lot of water in our mixture to make these very thin, sharp lines. And that can make it more transparent, but that's okay because we're working in such a dark sky area that even if it is transparent, it, it's just showing these darker pigments through and it's, it's really not an issue at all. Have to love that. 
Here you can see I'm still going in and painting so many more of these little strands. It really is a pleasure. Especially now, it just, it's so gratifying every single little stroke. Because it makes such an impact on a piece you know in the end you're going to love. There we go. I also am continuously going back and mixing more of my pigment, and I do that rather than mixing a lot of pigment to begin with, because it makes sure I get in the habit of mixing that color, and it makes it so I remember how to mix that color for the next time I need it. So it just makes me a better painter in the long run. I'm using lots of little strokes here and kind of connecting them. I find it's fairly good for detail-oriented areas, as you can see we're working on. Um, but if you want more of a fluid-looking painting, maybe you're making it a little bit more abstract, a little bit more impressionistic, then doing large, bold strokes can also be a great way of going about it. For the style of this one, though, I do like the little strokes. There we are. So close to the finish line. We still have to do the lights and all of that in there, but we're just so close. Going back over areas we did before that are a little bit thin. Could use a just an extra thin layer of paint there. Connecting the bottom of the mast. Working on this little rope ladder, which is quite fun. A lot of detail in it. When I'm working on extremely detailed areas, I like to just use the corner of my brush rather than the full head of it. Helps me get some extra control. There we are. So many little masks. All accumulating to something great. Now, yet again, I'm going to stand up and get a, another good bird's eye view of the painting, get a, a proper perspective of it, see what needs to be added, what needs to be changed. Something else I'd like to note quickly, though, is that I made the mast very small to begin with, and here I'm expanding upon it, especially in the bottom, to make it slightly more stark. I would always, always implore you to paint like that. When you're painting trees, anything detailed, anything small, um, start with a smaller application to begin with and then make it larger as you want it to be larger. Because it's much easier to make something larger than it is to make something smaller. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take a step back, give it an honest assessment, and then jump right back into it. So I'm back and I actually really love how it turned out. 
However, I do feel like the silhouette up here is kind of getting lost in the background. So we're going to add a little bit of a highlight of that light on the mast in the same way we did the rest of the ship. The light's just going to wrap around the mast there and illuminate it and bring it out a little bit. So here I'm taking some titanium white. I'm going to take a little bit of that lighter brown that we have, a hint of the darker brown. And then I'm going to work my way up from the bottom on the left hand side going on top of the black that we had and because acrylic paints are semi-transparent it's going to tone down the highlight ratting which is fine I don't want it to be a super bright highlight anyway and I'm just going to work my way up and work along the sides of the subjects that we have in here I'm not going to do a any of the ropes but the masts could use the extra detail. It's a subtle little thing, but it will make this stand out much better. And it makes sense within the context of the painting, which is nice. Even if it didn't, you could take the artistic liberty and just add it in anyway. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, changing the reality in your painting to fit the mood, atmosphere, or story, purpose, message of it. Here though it does make sense, which is nice. I can also throw a little bit of that highlight on a little bit of the cloth that's kind of draping here. Doing it predominantly on the left side and allowing it to dissipate as we move towards the right. And then we'll also blend this in as well. There we go. Like that a lot. Turned out really well. I'm going to take a hint more. That was more than a hint. When you add too much paint, remember, don't worry. While it's still wet, take a very wet brush. Apply it over the area, turn it all into water, and then with your finger, just drag it off. Just like that. No harm, no foul. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more of that paint, try again. And that's much brighter. Good. It's also quite sharp, which is what I wanted. And I'm just going back and doing a couple of layers, as you can see, as it's going to build up and get slightly brighter every time I add a new layer. There we go. I like that a lot. Now for our next step, I need clean water as we're going to work on the windows in here. We're going to use yellows, we're going to use oranges, so we need to make sure that it doesn't get diluted. So I'm going to clean my brush, my water, and then we'll jump right back into it. We are now back. I have some clean water, and I'm going to continue using the smaller brush because we are going to be working in some really detailed areas. So I'm going to begin by mixing up a bit of a darker light color, which we'll build on top of with the lighter light colors. So here I'm taking some of my cadmium yellow deep hue, some of my cadmium red light hue, mixing those two together, and then I'm just going to paint in all of these windows with this nice orange color that we have right here. It's very saturated, which is exactly what I want, because we have all of those oranges in the background and I want this to stand out quite nicely. Then I'm going to paint in three little round windows right there as well, and then we're going to take some of our titanium white and we're going to mix that in to our current pigment. Then I'm going to use the corner of my brush to paint in some little details. And I'm going to be fairly abstract with this right now. I'm just trying to not go over the black lines that separate all of our lights. 
but I'm just trying to add hints of light in different areas, in different highlights. That way it looks like inside it's kind of reflecting off different furniture or people. Gives it extra life. Here I started with these very small and now I'm just expanding upon them, making them slightly larger. And I didn't do the dark background for these because I didn't want them to stand out as much as the ones that we have right here. While these may be technically brighter throughout the entirety of them, they don't stand out to the same extent because they don't have the contrast. And things stand out when it's very bright and very dark. When they compete, when they're right next to each other. And that's exactly what these are doing right here. So now I'm going back in. I'm adding in extra highlights, but I'm keeping those darker oranges showing as well. And this is just going to make it so much more interesting. I'm going to do that up here with this little window too. And just like that, this boat drifting through the sea now, now has life on it, which is really special. Adding some extra titanium white, just kind of tapping it in there. Again, being fairly sporadic with it, making this window a little bit bigger, as you can see. And then I'm going to take that yellow and light red, mix those two together, take a hint of titanium white, I'm going to do a little bit of a reflection down here in the water from the lights. And here it's going to be fairly sporadic because the water is moving so much from the boat. So I'm just kind of tapping that in, kind of following some of the trails that we painted in earlier. There we go. I feel like I added a little bit too much here, so I'm just going to take some water and drag it off. There we go. Again, nice and easy fix. And then I'll come back in and kind of fix it up. But now we have this orange incorporated into this very blue side of our painting, which is really nice. From there I can take some extra titanium white, create some slightly more dominant highlights to go on top of those orange ones, in the same fashion that we did these, really. And this way it just looks like it has a bit of an orange glow around it. Creates a neat effect. There we are. I like that a lot. Now of course we have a lot of orange light so it only makes sense that we do add a little bit more up to our mast and all of that. So here I am just mixing up a pure vibrant orange. And I'll start applying that as we get higher and higher. And now you can really see it standing out next to the blue stars. And we didn't apply it like this first because it's such a transparent pigment it wouldn't show up on top of the black or almost black of the mast. But now that we have that nice diluted highlight, we can just kind of do this wash on top almost. Make it nice and vibrant, really stand out. There we are. You can also take hints of that orange and just throw it into the boat as well. Make it nice and cohesive. And then I'm going to take slightly more of our titanium white and create some extra little ripples. I said titanium white, but the brush still does have some yellow and orange on it, so it's 
more of an amalgamation of those pigments. Don't just use a pure titanium white. Make it a little bit more interesting by creating these golds yet again. Just adding some extra detail to this beautiful water we have. Remember, as you get closer to the foreground, closer to us, the waves should get bigger because we can see the detail more. And then as they get towards the middle ground, they become more of these horizontal lines. And then it just kind of becomes this diffused light in the background where we can't recognize detail anymore because it's just too far away. There we are. Going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, make it slightly red dominant, a little bit of titanium white, and here I'll throw in a couple more waves back here too. Remember to mix it well on your palette, that way it doesn't have different colors on different areas. There we are. That stands out beautifully. Sometimes those extra finishing touches just do so much for the piece. This is definitely one of those examples. Now when we used blue right there, the water is still yellow so I can still work with yellows. And with that, with the thought of just how well that worked, I want to go back in and add slightly more of a yellow-orange highlight to the top of the mast. Just such a delicate application. There, you can see a little bit of maybe a reflection catching the light shining, glowing, make it a little bit brighter, stands out. Add it to the tops of these masks too. won't show up as much because we didn't do the initial layer of the titanium white and the browns, but it'll be nice and subtle. Now I'm going to take a couple steps back. Again, give it a very honest look. Wow. Love that. I'm going to take a little bit more of our Highlight, and in there. A little bit more to this one. This one. Take your time with this, make sure you do it right. Don't just dive in and add highlights everywhere. Assess where you really want them. And that answer might be different for some of us. That's okay. Love to see how you change and adapt the paintings. Always so interesting. There we go. Beautiful glow. 
Now to finish this painting off, I'm just going to do one more little touch up and that's to these nice beautiful peachy orange clouds. For that I'm going to grab some of our cadmium red light hue, some of our cadmium red medium hue, some titanium white, and a hint of our cadmium yellow deep hue. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of a highlight and a thick line to the bottom of these clouds. As you can see here, further define them. I really love this color and I just wanted to accentuate it a little bit more. In fact, I think we might mix up a slightly more orangey version. A little bit less titanium white just to keep that vibrancy up. And we'll just throw in some extra clouds throughout the painting. Specifically over here, just because we have so much blue, I think it could benefit from a little bit of orange. We're using fairly thin paint right now because we don't have a lot of titanium white in it. So I am trying to go back over areas and apply extra layers. I'm also making some of these very thin and transparent by applying a lot of pressure to make it look like the clouds are farther away in the distance as well. I'm also not using a lot of water for this part of the process as that will thin the paint quite greatly. Again, we're going over those same areas. It's very saturated, I like that a lot. We'll kind of connect this cluster of clouds over to this one as well. And I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white to collect or to connect them, just because the right side is definitely more saturated and that's okay, but if we're going to do that, we need to balance it and show a transition. So that's what I'm doing right here. Working my way around those lines. There we go. Taking a couple of steps back getting a truly honest view of it and loving it, loving it even more. It's so, so nice when you get to feel this way about a painting. So glad this is the one we are ushering in these longer lessons with, just to show you the, the potential of the series. I've seen a lot of fantastic artistic YouTubers lately posting these hour long, two hour long lessons and I wasn't really sure if people would be interested in that but it seems like, it seems like it. So, you know, we can put some extra time into these lessons. We can make them as good as we can. And I'm just so pleased that we get to do work like this now. So, here's to the new year, trying new things, getting better at what we're doing, continuing to learn, doing new interesting things like painting this ship. And just continuing to do what we love, become great painters, create inspiring images for ourselves, friends, families, all of it. Beautiful. Again, I'm taking a couple of steps back, making sure I don't overdo it. I like that a lot. Can brighten it up slightly in here. Don't want too much highlight though. I do like how it gets darker and dissipates as we move farther away from the light. So I'm not going to do as many, just enough to kind of tie it in and keep the consistency going. So 
Some really subtle dark ones here in the background. Can you make them even more subtle by just kind of scraping some of that paint off with your finger? Easy techniques that do a lot of work. There we are. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of a glow effect. I'm just going to take some of our yellow, a little bit of our red, hint of our titanium white, and I'm going to go over this dark, almost black area with this pigment. Work my brush in little round strokes, that way you get this kind of warm light emitting from these areas. It's a very subtle effect. You can make it slightly more present by taking some extra titanium white and working it in there, but you don't want to overdo it. This is also a great opportunity to use your fingers and just brighten this nice lit area. Just like that. And there we have another wonderful detail in our painting. But with that said, there we have it. Anyways, there we have it. That is today's hour-long, but really more around two hour-long painting lesson. I really hope you enjoyed the first lesson in this new series. I know I had a lot of fun. It was great to work on a slightly larger canvas, use some extra detail, and really play with some new colors as well. I hope you enjoyed. As per usual, again, if you are, if you watched the video and now you're going to go do the painting, if you'd like help with the drawing process, Digital Sketch is up over on Patreon. Patreon is a great way to help support this channel. And I will be back next week with another entry in this new series. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's been absolutely wonderful. If you finish the piece, you are at the Alpine level on Patreon, please share your work over there. We can all talk about it. I can give you a little critique. It'll be a really, a really beneficial experience. And as per usual, I suppose we'll end this as we always do with the great tagline, the great note of stay creative. Thank you.